Hello and welcome to the channel. So this is uh, my rundown from Telford. Now we've just done Scale Model World, which is the IPMS show, uh, which is the UK Nationals in uh, Telford in the UK. And it's uh, run every year by the IPMS. So if you're a visitor or a member of the IPMS or you're a branch or you're a special interest group, it's usually the kind of pilgrimage, it's the big show you kind of look to. There's lots of little shows up and down the country, but every year everyone sort of comes together to this show and um, it makes quite an experience. So it's, it's very big, there's three big halls um, and uh, we were back to that this year. Uh, I didn't go last year when there was a few restrictions on and it was a bit smaller, uh, but it was back to how I know it. Um, just a, possibly a touch of the... A little sparkle missing with um, not having people like Special Hobby, Edward, a uh, few big people like that. I didn't see the Revel booth like um, usually see it. But again, as far as the show is concerned, it's not really a massive miss as such. All the kits and everything was there on, on offer as they usually would be. And it was very interesting. So the difference this year for me is the competition was downstairs. I'm used to it being up in the foyer. Apart from that, everything was as it was. Oh, uh, maybe it was a little bit, um, a little bit smaller as well. I remember there being a quite a large canteen and the kit swap. All of that was stopped. But apart from that, it was back to as as I know it. So we had a great show. I was there representing uh, two special interest groups, BF109 and Spanish Civil War, and also I was part of the South Somerset uh, IPMS group as well, which I'm the chairman for, and I think it, it all went very well. I um, wasn't doing too much leading from the front personally. Uh, we, I was there giving cover and making sure everyone was happy, but really letting the members take the kind of lead on, on it, and I think we did very well for that, to be honest. Um, I think everyone had a good time across the branch and the special interest groups, um, Ian and Alan helped me out on uh, the Spanish Civil War group and after sitting back and seeing them, they're very forward. I, I'm very much like sit back and, and let them carry on there, um, let, let people sort of go by and, and if they ask a question I'll respond, whereas those chats are a bit more um, forward, which is what you need to be because when someone's a bit silent, you know, they often want to talk but you've got to encourage them and that's very much sort of leaping over the table, you know, explaining what the different models were and I did see quite a lot of feedback um, as I said as I was standing back just watching seeing how everything was going uh, same with our um, branch as well I was very proud of um, how that looked um, the members basically took the lead I didn't really do very much myself rather than just make sure it was all sort of everyone was happy like I said and there was cover and no one was leaving anyone in the lurch and we had quite a lot of uh, uh, people stop by which is unusual to me. I remember in the past it's quite difficult if you're a branch especially to, uh, to not blend into uh, others. If you're a special interest group, see for instance if you like the Spanish of a war you're going to seek us out for instance. So you tend to have a fair bit of um, uh, people stopping by anyway but when you're a branch it's quite hard to get people to not just just do instead of just doing that actually go oh, oh and come back and have a look at this and have a look at that and actually make them talk and I, I was surprised I was looking over a number of times and I was thinking was well, like quite a group of people stood in front so we must have had a very varied display um, and diverse display and I think we did uh, so I was happy with that that's good to see and uh, long may that continue and there's stuff to build on there for next year so lots of momentum uh, I travelled up with uh, Tim from Tim Scale Modelling so if you follow him he's got a YouTube channel and runs the Facebook group British Aviation and Scale so we had a good trip up um, and I think he enjoyed himself he was actually I'm sure he won't mind me saying but he was lacking a little bit in his mojo on the way up and um, from what I can see uh, that's not a problem anymore he seems um, raring to go so that's what the show can do to you if you you know it, it, what well, all shows can do this but especially Telford you know if you are th feeling a little bit like oh lacking inspiration then um you know you do well to come back from Telford and still be lacking inspiration there's so much on show it's a fantastic uh, advert for our um our good little hobby now um what were the highlights i think i have to say it might shock some of you who think i'm um i've had some comments saying i hate airfit it's quite the opposite actually i love airfit i think they think they're brilliant um got lots of their models and i will be buying more of their models and their stand was very good. Now, what impressed me, a couple of things, a little nod to something that might be coming in the future. I was surprised how big and impressive the Buccaneer looked. Not an aircraft I've ever really had any interest in. 
until now. Um, and also the built-up models of the, the, the 172nd twins, so like the Blenheim and the uh, uh, Beaufort and, and things like that, as well as the Defiant and that sort of things, which I, I have got a few of those, and, and I do find myself uh, somewhat discounting them. I talk myself out of it, think, oh, well, I need to get masks and I'll etch set, and then it becomes a bigger project, a more expensive project. I'm not sure that's the case. After seeing them well built on the FX stand, um, I think it's... It, there's nothing wrong with those kits. Uh, I, I think it might be something I'd need to explore going forward um, and maybe actually uh, have a word with myself and actually get get one on the bench. Uh, it was nice to see the Anson there as well, which looks like a fabulous kit. Not my cup of tea, because um, as much as I've tried, I know two people that's got the Anson. I've seen it at the club. I've looked in the box. I just, I have nothing, nothing for it. <laughs> it doesn't do anything for me. But I know a lot of people love it and um, it's sold like hotcakes, so that's a great thing. Um, the Airfix Spitfire was there as well, 124 Spitfire. To me, it looks like Airfix have produced a 124 Airfix Spitfire, which looks just like the Tamiya Spitfire to me. Um, personally, I'm a 132nd scale guy, so I wouldn't want to merge over to 124th. That's just personal taste. The kit looks superb, so if it is your cup of tea, uh, I know they're going out this week, I think, so I'm, I'm sure there'll be a lot of happy customers receiving those. Uh, keeping on Spitfires, Katari were there as well, Richard Alexander, and um, I for didn't catch the name of the other chap, actually. There's two of them there, flown over from New Zealand. That kit looks incredible. That is one that's on my list, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. I did uh, have possibly the most obvious comment of the um, of the weekend. Maybe I can win that award by telling Richard Alexander that his Spitfire looked very much like a Spitfire, to which everyone looked at me and thought, well, that's good, isn't it? Uh, but what I meant was, I think if you put the Revel Spitfire, you could argue that it doesn't quite look like that. Um, that it looks exactly like a Spitfire shrunk down and often uh, sometimes model companies can get that a little bit wrong so it's good to see that looks good lots of surface detail uh, not masses of recessed rivets which might surprise some people did me a little bit uh, although I don't actually like recessed rivets I, I you, you know when you when you've seen like Edward kits and obviously the the Airfix kit has got lots of rivets on it rivet rivets on it um, you can kind of get down that track of thinking everything needs rivets. This one doesn't have it. It has some raised rivets around the fuselage, but no recessed rivets. It's not got millions of little holes all over it. Um, it has got raised and recessed panels, and by that I mean, you know, you can run your hand along uh, recessed panel lines, and then there's a, a kind of panel that goes up and over and then down again, So, which is what we expect, a little bit like the Border Lancaster, has sort of layered panels and bit of tin canning along the wings so that looks really nice and that's uh, very much uh, coming around the corner as well so it was good to speak to them and then the rest of the show was brilliant I mean I could say the same about all kinds of things the Tamiya Comet was there we looked at the Tamiya store with the F-35 as well which is not my aircraft at all but it looks fantastic uh, so it was a great show and that's what it's good for so really enjoyed that um, met a lot of uh, you guys a lot of a lot of people came up to the uh, table which was great and um, said you like the channel and what surprised me I was keeping a rough count I think two people said that they liked aircraft everyone else it was armor uh, so that sort of given me a reminder uh, because I do sort of go in and out with armor I mean uh, the, the last lot I've built has been aircraft um, there is a piece of armor there if you're eagle-eyed I won't go into that any more than other than say it's a type of panther. Um, for me, armour, I'm struggling a little bit at the minute, getting bogged down here and there, but I won't be and we'll get back to armour. So all you armour guys, hang in there. Uh, we're not going anywhere. And there will be a lot more armour coming back to the channel. In fact, one of the builds is this armour. It's very topical. It's ground forces. A certain TV show has got me inspired to um, get this one done. So I'm going to have a go at that as we're on kit. Armour guys, glad to pick that up for 20 quid. Don't see this so much anymore. I've got the AB41, this is the AB43. Absolutely love that. And then the kit that started everything for me in 148. I just had to get it again, the FW190A4. Fantastic kit, great boxing. First proper F, uh, Edward kit I ever built. 
loved it. Absolutely love it. So couldn't um, couldn't miss up that bargain. I got something else as well. Oh yeah, Tamiya Comet has gone in the Christmas pile. So there we are. Uh, some Allied stuff coming down the line. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Now, uh, new for me, this model here, I entered the competition. I said I was going to, I entered two models into the competition. Um, this was standard kit, no additional details. So standard kit, 148th, single prop, single prop, single seat fighter. You were allowed to use belts, you were allowed to use aftermarket decals. This has both. So this has belts added and aftermarket decals. We will get onto it in a little bit and have a look at it. But I couldn't believe it. I went in for a commended, uh, as in meaning I would be ecstatic if I got a commended. I wasn't expecting anything. I managed to get silver, which I was very happy with. So there we are. That was a massive surprise. And again, I thought I only got, as I came back, let's have a look. Well, let's leave it out. It's my moment to shine. So what you do is um, you put your card down with your model and then you come back and if you're really lucky, you see something like this. And I thought that's all you get. And then when I went and asked, uh, they said, no, uh, of course you silly sod, you're going to get a medal. So there we are, fantastic stuff. I've got a medal, can't believe it. Still hasn't really sunk in. Feels very strange, I must admit. Um, in a number of ways. Uh, and I need to kind of unpack that for myself to kind of um, think about how I feel. What I mean is, the weird thing I found, going into it now, look, the weird thing I found is there's like, before I've never entered the competition, now the competition is a sort of major part for me. You know what's gonna happen, I'm gonna build up, I'm gonna say, oh, we're gonna enter something in the competition next year, do the best build I've ever done, think this is, here we go, we're gonna get gold, gonna get gold, and you get nothing. That's fine, that's fine by me. But it's something that um, I want to enter, want to have a go at, and it's a new chapter. It, that's what I'm trying to say. It's a new aspect to the modeling that I haven't had for a long time. I used to do it when I was a junior. So really tough to have um, picked some, got something out of the competition. It was a very tough competition all the way through, and um, I didn't expect to get anything, and I'm very chuffed to have. So before I keep repeating myself and going on and starting to get embarrassed about it, um, so you get the certificate, like I said. Now, an interesting thing happened for you guys who are competition. I know a lot of uh, the American guys on um, the uh, Facebook groups talk about different competitions. Now, this is the class I entered it into. What I find interesting is we've got an, someone's crossed out and put an 11 there. Um, 11 is for additional detailing. Now, I think I might have unpacked something interesting, is that this model... <laughs> If you watch the video, it's a model I didn't think very highly of. Um, it's got the open engine bay. Now I've got a feeling, because uh, it looks like, I don't know if this is a rule, but it looks like you don't get aircraft modelers to judge the aircraft, so on and so forth. Um, so not everyone knows every single kit. I've got a feeling that someone's looked at this and thought, well, they've opened a load of panels, so that needs to go in additional detailing. And then someone else has come over and said, hang on a minute, isn't that the Tamiya kit? And because you have to put the instructions there, they flick through the instructions, put it back in the class, it's been re-awarded and it's managed to get silver. I, that's the only thing I can imagine. So I'm thankful that happened because it would have been sad to have seen a disqualified, especially if it wasn't, shouldn't have been disqualified, but that didn't happen. So we can trust in the process and it worked out very well. So I'm happy with that, as I've said many times. So um, that was, uh, an amazing highlight that I didn't expect and I haven't really uh, come to terms with yet. The purchases were a little bit tame, I must admit. I left it late. Uh, this show wasn't about that for me. Um, usually I go up there on my own or with my partner or there's not very many of us, so kind of me getting away from the table is going to buy something. This time it was done very socially. It was about 10 of us, really, at any one time at the show or uh, maybe about five of us after the show. So therefore, I didn't really want to go around buying anything necessarily, and I, I left it very late. So a lot of the stuff I wanted, saw Tamiya Comet there for £45, a few other things, they were long gone by the time I went around. But I did manage to grab, like I say, the AB43, which, I mean, fantastic. That's a rare kit in my eyes. And um, the FW190A4, and then I did pop to a model shop randomly, uh, as if you can't get enough. 
had the day off and popped up to old Jadders in Glastonbury, Jadland Models, and got the SAS Jeeps, which I was happy about because I was very close to buying the Tamiya kit, which is very old, and I'm much happier to have that, and uh, the Comet, um, the Tamiya Comet, because, you know, I need, should have got some Christmas presents up at the show, so I needed to start that as well. So there we are. I did do a bit of filming, and I'll attach that on to the end of this. I've started filming the competition area. Um, uh, not to blame him, it was very, very nice. Got inter interrupted by, uh, no, won't say fan, uh, a fan of the channel, let's say, who'd entered the competition. So as I was there, I went and had a look at what he had entered as well. This fantastic, um, I'm not a jet man. I'm going to just trust my instinct and say it was a Tomcat. It was a very old Tamiya kit that he had upgraded and put a lot into. So we were talking about that. So it, it must be the Tomcat, you'll remind me. Big old plane it was. Uh, that was fantastic, nice to see. So it was interesting to chat to him. And on and around the show, I bumped into a few people as well. And we, you know, we had a good chat as well. So I think that has got to go down as one of the very good, if not best, shows I've seen. Uh, my friend Paddy came over as well. Mine and Tim's friend Paddy came over on Saturday night, stayed at our um, apartment. We had a really good um, apartment that we got. And um, that was good as well. Chill out, have some drinks. And then he came around with us on the Sunday for the show, which gave a good dynamic because we're, you know, quite close, us three. So that was really good. Good way to spend it. Really enjoyed it. Great company. Great show. Fantastic result. Very uh, uh, surprised by that. And um, I think I, th I, th I think... All I can say to repeat myself is it was a very good show. So I'm going to leave you with a bit of footage, a few pictures from uh, my experience, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the rundown. Thanks for coming up. If you did, let me know in, down in your comments so I can at least know, you know, put some names, maybe not the faces, but some names to people that I met, and one day they might all cross up and link up, and um, that would be great. So, as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned to the rest of this video for a bit of a show report and i'll see you in the next video there's plenty coming down the line i've got about seven kits to finish off uh, which all have videos attached to them and then we'll be into some new projects uh, and obviously as we did the review uh, this one will be coming up if there's any fans of that as well so lots coming down the line stay tuned i'll see you in a bit Thank you.